was six when I learned to tie my shoes in the shadow of a receding glacier. So my feet were laced up by my own fingers when I ran away from a premature understanding of hydrology and climate change. Geographer parents, a glaciologist father, traveling to see rivers of ice cradled between mountain arms like a tsunami wave in pale slow motion. The tourist signs for where it stood in 1863, 1928, 1979 are like headstones. Refrigerated endings last longer, running out of time in thousand year increments. But I was just born a few years ago, and this ice is too blue to be dying. Its edges are gravel stained and deadly to those who stand too close or climb too quickly, vengeful in resignation because nothing alive today will sit still long enough to listen to its stories, the aching nostalgia of one who still bears the weight of the mammoths who walked across its shoulders, but cannot remember their name. The glacier is weeping itself into invisibility. Water is its blood. Centuries are too long to be tied back together by six-year-old fingers. I've seen my father's climbing ladders stretch across crevasses like stitches in a wound, but he isn't here to stop the bleeding. There are no doctors for ice and ancient only morticians and scientists. The act of witnessing disappearance is not even enough to staunch the flow of a child's indignation. What use is survey equipment if you can't bring back what it measures the end of? What do I need shoes for if I can't run from something like this? Understanding too early that time is fossilizing inside me, knowing as I stand here that this field of gravel is a graveyard. This runoff stream is a ghost, the spirit of a cold river, slow enough to move backwards and be erased by the sun. <laughs>